David Cameron braved Storm Gertrude to fly to Brussels on Friday as his EU renegotiation entered its final phase, knowing that he'll face extreme turbulence at Westminster if, or when, he finally secures his deal. Already, Eurosceptics are denouncing the compromises being prepared in Brussels, notably a so-called emergency break to limit welfare claims by EU migrants, and they're preparing to fight Mr Cameron all the way to a referendum. That could happen as early as June. There's just one problem. There isn't yet a single out campaign, rather a group of organisations jostling for position and sometimes hurling brickbats at each other. Two weeks ago, we spoke to the Britain in camp about how MPs of different persuasions might work together. But when is the cross-party leave campaign going to get its act together? On one side, there is leave.eu, whose supporters include UKIP leader Nigel Farage, which believes that immigration should be a big part of the exit campaign. On the other is Vote Leave, backed by, among others, UKIP's only MP, Douglas Carswell, which wants to focus on the economy. Starting to sound like Monty Python's Judean People's Front sketch? Well, to try to make sense of where all this is going, we brought together Aaron Banks, the insurance millionaire and UKIP donor who set up the Leave.eu campaign, and Tom Purseglove, a Conservative member of the cross-party Grassroots Out organisation, to discuss the nascent Out campaign. I started by asking Aaron Banks why Leave.eu and Vote Leave didn't just merge. Well, look, I've written to them four times and said I think we should merge. I absolutely agree. I mean, it's crazy. There's something at the current time, 42 out campaigns. And right, there's two major campaigns. And it's not wrong that people should have their own campaign and do their own thing. But in terms of the national campaign, clearly it makes sense to put the two together. The two sets of infrastructure... We're obviously much more grassroots orientated. 3,000 people out delivering leaflets, that kind of thing. And they're probably a little bit more SW1 bubble from top down. And actually, in a lot of ways, the two things have got complementary strengths. But it doesn't seem to help matters that you seem to spend a lot of time hurling insults at each other. Um, I usually respond to the insults. I don't usually make them. You were, quite rude. About, uh, you, uh, you, were, you were you were you were quite rude about Douglas Carswell, were you not? The UK MP, you said he I think was, that was an U- internal... borderline autistic <clears throat> with mental illness wrapped in. I think that was an internal UKIP matter, wasn't it? Really, nothing to do with the uh, campaign. Okay, Tom Perscott, you've been out on the ground campaigning for a British exit. Wouldn't you like to see the two rival exit groups join together and have a single unified campaign? Absolutely, I think that we've got to have one single leave campaign in the end and the sooner that can happen the better because we've got to be completely focused on the referendum that's ahead of us and that's why we set up grassroots out because on the ground local people in local constituencies just want to get on with the job Mm. of trying to get our country out of the european union kate hoey the labour mp another eurosceptic said that she didn't want to see egos on either side getting in the way of a single campaign do you think there are too many egos out there too many people like aaron maybe Well, I have to say that Aaron has been incredibly supportive of the Grassroots Out initiative and what we've seen, and I've had a lot of discussions in the last few weeks with different leave organisations, is there is a real appetite to try and bring everybody together. The offer is very clear and it gets past any egos, any of those issues, Mm. because all of these things that have happened before have got to be put to one side. We've got one aim, which is to win this referendum, and we've got to come together to do that. And can you just explain for listeners who haven't followed all the intricacies (laughs) of these different groups, Mm. what do you think the obstacles are to getting the groups together? Well, look, there are always personalities with these things. And certainly with politicians, things have been said in the past, things have happened in the past, and sometimes it's difficult to get past that. But we've got to get past it in order to win this referendum. And I think people have got to get in a room, get together, find a solution to this, and move forward. We can't carry on as we are. We've been talking about personalities and egos a bit there, but it seems to me there's also a political difference here between the two big exit campaigns about how you go about fighting the referendum. On your side, Aaron Banks, seems to be more of a focus on immigration as a key issue in the campaign. Mm. And on the other side, people saying it's more about the economy. Is that, is I, don't, I don't think it's all about immigration, but mm-hmm. you certainly can't not talk about immigration. And that's mm. been the lesson of the last two or three years. When we polled up to 10,000 people, we discovered that about 40% want to stay in, 40% want to leave, and then you've got the undecideds. And by a, a margin of 15 to 1, their number one concern is immigration. So we, we shouldn't talk just about immigration, because this was about returning power to parliament it's about a whole range of things but it would be very foolish not to address it head on quite often as tom would appreciate as well rolls into things like hospitals schools and other things that are proxies for immigration 
Mm. So that's quite important. I think that's absolutely right. Certainly in my constituency, immigration is the number one issue on the doorstep. But it's about talking about a mixture of issues. And on the immigration mm. side, it's clear that people want control over our borders, but also a fairer immigration system. It's also about not sending £350 million a week over to Brussels mm. to spend and spending that on our own public services. And I think all of those issues, along with wanting to have a global outlook in terms of mm. our trading relationships, what this referendum is going to be about. We've got to talk about all of those issues in a mixture. Now, David Cameron's hoping to get a deal in yeah. Brussels next month. Is there anything he could achieve in Brussels that would make you change your mind? I think he's laid out what he wants, and I think what he wants is pretty, you know, meaningless. I mean, if I look at the migrant benefit issue, it's government policy already to raise minimum wage, which effectively means that the plan is to move people that were um, getting the benefits onto a higher minimum wage which effectively means he's withdrawing something he plans to withdraw anyway. And Tom Perscoff, do you think you should give the Prime Minister the benefit of the doubt and wait and see what he comes back with from Brussels? To be fair, I was a Conservative MP that was very willing to give the renegotiation a chance, despite the fact that I'm very Eurosceptic. And I have to say that it's become increasingly clear in the last few months that the renegotiation doesn't amount to very much. Now, I don't blame the Prime Minister for that at all. The European elite are responsible for this. They're simply not interested in a meaningful renegotiation. And so... I've concluded that this isn't going to amount to very much and I'm completely on the side of trying to get our country out of the European Union. I think most of my constituents will be in that place too. Aaron Banks, finally, mm. we assume that at some point there will be a unified exit campaign. There has to be under the terms of the referendum. Maybe sooner than you think. Well, possibly. <laughs> uh, who, who, sh who should front it, do you think? I don't like this the idea of one individual person fronting. I think it's very wrong. It should be people from all different walks of life. You know, we've got scientists doctors, different people we want to put forward as spokespeople, not just the elite or the politicians. You have to admit, if Boris Johnson were to join the out campaign, he'd be a formidable operator. Do you think he will be on your side? I think it's unlikely. Um, I don't think he's a Eurosceptic, but if he did, well, wonderful. Aaron Banks and Tom Persglove on the Brexit campaign.